much shaking my friends welcome back to my channel welcome back to the start of a new vlog it's april the 30th i know i'm starting early but if you didn't see my may tbr i decided to get rid of some of those books in my back list which is like huge and um so i picked one at the end of my may tbr video and that was race the sands by sarah beth durst and i am now 25 percent into that book um, I'm listening to it and I'm reading it on my Kindle as well, doing some immersion reading. Sarah Beth Durst is my first read by the author. She is most, I think, known for her Queens of Renthia series, which I am also very interested in. I'm interested in several books. But this particular one, I'm 25% into. I'm going to read the synopsis because I feel like it's kind of difficult to explain. Okay. First of all, this is a standalone fantasy and that is a fantastic because we need more standalones in fantasy. Okay. So here's what the synopsis says. Life, death, and rebirth. In Bakar, who you are in this life will determine your next life. Yet there is hope. You can change your destiny with the choices you make. But for the darkest individuals, there is no redemption. You come back as a keyhawk, a monster, and are doomed to be a keyhawk for the rest of time. Unless you can win the races. After a celebrated career as an elite keyhawk rider, Tamara becomes a professional trainer. Then a tragic accident shattered her confidence, damaged her reputation, and left her nearly broke. Now she needs the prize money to prevent the local temple from taking her daughter away from her, and that means she must once again Find a winning Keyhawk and a rider willing to trust her. Raya is desperate to get away from her domineering family and cruel fiancé. As a Keyhawk rider, she could earn enough to buy her freedom, but she needs a first-rate trainer. Impressed by the inexperienced young woman's determination, Tamara hires Raya and pairs her with a strange new Keyhawk with the potential to win, if he can be tamed. But in this sport, if you forget you're riding on the back of a monster you die. Tamara and Raya will work harder than they ever thought possible to win the deadly Bakaran races and in the process discover what makes this particular Keyhawk so special. I'm 25% in and so far you know we've met our main character that's going to be Tamara and she her goal is she has to make money in order to keep her daughter. Her daughter is going to school to be an auger which is great but you have to pay for them to go be an auger. If you cannot pay it's not like they'll just take them out of auger school. It just means that they will take them out away from you and you won't be able to see them until they become adults. So she desperately doesn't want to lose her daughter and so she knows she has to make money and some accidents have occurred and she is known to be not the best of trainers but she has been basically given the ultimatum you either a you find a keyhawk you find a rider that's going to give you the money to win or b you lose your daughter and so she has found a keyhawk that is very difficult and she has found a rider who has never ridden before and that's going to be Raya and so they are together going to try to learn and, and win the race so we're also we do get another point of view about kind of the the leadership of the Bakarn world I, I'm intrigued I'm intrigued at 25% in I'm having a good time I'm liking the characters I think it's supposed to be an adult but it reads YA or adult it reads a little bit younger but i think plenty of audiences can actually enjoy this so i'm going to keep reading this and then i will check back in when i'm a little bit farther into the story okay so it's late it's still april the 30th and you're not going to believe this but i finished race the sands and i may have to if, if the previous clip is is weird it's because i had to cut something like, out because I realized I said something spoilery. So I finished. I think I'm going to give it a three star. I really liked it, but it wasn't anything to write home about, unfortunately. But again, I liked the characters. I liked the world. It was kind of a mystery in there. And it, it was just, you know, your typical YA fantasy. And I really liked um, the setting, the racing, the animals, the build up, the world, the government. I liked it all. There was nothing I really didn't like. It just, you know, it didn't push the boundaries to me with it being YA. So overall, I enjoyed it. 3, 3.5 if I gave 0.5 stars. Um, but I listened, got to listen to most of it because I was cleaning today. So I had the audio book. And sometimes I don't enjoy books as much if I'm just listening to them on audio as, I, as if I was like reading with my eyes and doing as well. But overall, an enjoyable read. 
and now I'm going to need to draw uh, for another book and so let me get my pouch of books okay so they're all in here who's to say what I'm about to get So this is Cemetery Boys. So this is one that I've also been wanting to read. This is by Aiden Thomas. This is a YA book. I've actually purchased this one about 5,000 times and have not done it. Um, it's another YA. I don't know if I'm going to get burnt out on YA because it's so crazy because I like I don't have just YA books in here. I have a lot of adult books in there and I uh, just have a mixture of things and I got two YA fantasies back to back which is fine but I will check in and kind of let you guys know how I'm doing with Cemetery Boys and tomorrow which tomorrow is officially May the 1st which is when I was supposed to start this anyway so fantastic I'll check in tomorrow okay so it's Monday it's officially the first the start of the new month and I am now 27% into Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. So quickly, let me give kind of a synopsis. I didn't really read the synopsis before I went in, so I'm kind of um, learning as I go along. So this is following our main character, Yadriel, and basically he is a trans boy, and he is out to prove that he can be a brujo and not a bruja. So he is trans, and his family has a very difficult time with that. So a bruja is the females of the clan, and they are in charge of healing, and the brujos, which are the males, they are in charge of, they can see spirits, and they kind of guide the spirits into the afterlife. And so he is determined that he's going to be a brujo. He is not a bruja. And his family is having some difficulties with this. So he decides to basically do the ritual that makes him a brujo on his own. His family won't do it for him because they're saying that he can never be a brujo. And he thinks it works. And the night that he does this ritual, he get they get this very uh, painful feeling. Everybody in the clan, because one of his cousins he know they know that one of his cousins has died and so the brujos of the clan go to try to find uh his body and his spirit and try to g guide him into the afterlife and they tell Yadriel no he has to stay with the women of the clan and so of course is he going to do this no he goes out on his own and he summons a spirit which he thinks could possibly be his cousin the missing spirit however it is not it is he summons this boy that has this bad kind of reputation and so he has to now take care of the spirit and so that's where we are 27 percent and i'm not sure what the rest of the story is going to be about but he has now summoned this bad boy and we're going to get get some more stuff going on and i don't know what's going to happen from here I'm enjoying the story so far. I am kind of wondering what the plot is going to be. Um, of course, we have the gender identity uh, thing going on between Yadro and his family, and that's going to be a play a bigger part in the story, I believe. And but I don't know what's going to happen with Julian. Maybe we're going to look for who has killed him. I don't know. Um, as we try to guide his spirit into the afterlife, I'm not sure. I'm pretty positive there's going to be some kind of romantic element between uh, Yadriel and Julian, which is the bad spirit. So I'm enjoying this so far. I'm not going to finish tonight. I probably won't finish tomorrow. I'll probably finish maybe Wednesday night um, and hope to enjoy this. Every When I look on Goodreads, everybody I know is giving this five stars, five stars, five stars. It has a very high rating. It has 70 something thousand ratings and like a 4.5 or something on Goodreads. It's ridiculous. Um, so I'm, you know, but I'm enjoying myself so far. So I'm going to keep reading and I will update you guys when I get farther in. Okay. It's Wednesday. First, I want to let y'all know that I'm a little <laughs> inebriated. I had some toddies. <laughs> and so I'm here to tell you guys that I did finish Cemetery Voice. So let's talk real quick. I ended up giving this three stars for a multitude of reasons. So again, I think I said when I was at the 20 something percent mark that I was enjoying the book. But as time went on, I felt like the book was marketed wrong because number one, I felt like it was marketed more towards a fantasy, but to me, this is completely a fantasy romance. There's a light on the fan fantasy, heavy on the romance. So, again, we're following this boy that is trans 
uh, transgender boy, and he wants to be a brujo who has the ability to see spirits and all of that. He doesn't want to be a bruja, which is the women who are the healers. And he is out to prove to his father that he can be, you know, a man. He can be a boy and not a girl. And so that's the whole thing. He's transgendered and it brings on a lot of topics of conversations about acceptance and being a transgendered, which I think this, the, it was done very well. Also a good representation of Latinx community. However, um, and I caught this on read and then I went to Goodreads and I read some reviews and which solidified my thinking of this. So here we have this book that is doing some great things with transgender representation, but it is still playing into these gender stereotypes, specifically for women is what I'm talking about. Um, you'll see, if you look on Goodreads, you'll see a lot of people will say that the book is sexist. And I agree with that to some extent because um, transgender rep is great. However, like just for instance, one scene in particular, and with that, this is not spoilery, but we figure out somebody has died and so they're trying to go hunt what has happened to this person so the brujos which are the men um are going to go hunt and see what happened to this person that has died and then our main character is mad because of course the brujos tell the brujas no your job is to be a woman and you have to stay at home and he tells our main character that he's a bruja and he must stay at home and cook and, and, and do, like, with the rest of the women. So, okay, first of all, gender stereotypes. I understand that in Latinx communities, like, it's a very patriarchal society. I think that was brought up. But, like, you could have chosen to discuss the gender stereotypes instead of, like, just in this scene. Instead of being like, oh, well, it's not fair that the women also have to just stay at home. But instead, we discuss just the fact that... He was not a bruja, he was a brujo, because uh, he was transgendered, and he should not have been lumped in to the women, and he should not have been having to stay home in the kitchen and cook like the women do. And I felt like that was a missed opportunity, because I just, I don't understand why in this great book that you have great transgender representation, you still have this very sexist um, outlook on what women are supposed to do and these gender stereotypes on women. So I ended up giving it three stars. Um, again, it was mostly a romance. It was light on the fantasy. I think the plot was so-so. I also think that, you know, somebody has died and our main character, while they're trying to investigate what happened, to this person and what happened to this spirit that he has conjured there was no grief and this person that has died was supposed to be like related to him so I just there was no grief like I, I don't know I felt disconnected from the characters and so this book gets a lot of praise it has like 4.3 and it's like 70,000 ratings I'm not quite sure why um but again this goes back to the the point that I think why fantasy I'm just growing out of it I'm growing out of it so I do have my my um thing here and i'm gonna be honest if i get another life fantasy i just don't know how this is gonna go i'm gonna have to um read one of the books that i'm you know supposed to read the three books that i have that i really want to get to this month so we'll kind of just have to see where i fall depending on what i pick out sure there's so many books in here Hundreds, 500. I don't know. It's got to be close to 500. Let's see what it is. It's the first girl child. Okay. I think, I think this is by Amy Harmon. We're going to have to see it. We're going to have to see it. I think that it is by Amy Harmon. And I have no idea why this book is, <laughs> is in here. Um, let's see. Um, yes, I was right. It's by Amy Harmon. Um, so I've always been in, slightly interested in Amy Harmon's works. She has some very popular works. This is a series. Okay, so a breathtaking fantasy of a cursed kingdom, warring clans, and unexpected salvation. Oh, I didn't know this was a fantasy. I don't know when I added this to my um, shelves, but it has a 4.27 Goodreads with 16,453 reviews. So I'm interested. I'm interested. So we'll kind of see where this goes. Uh, of course, this would not have been on my radar for quite some time. It is a series. Let's see if the second book is out. That's really interesting. Um, the second book is out. Is it going to be any more? I don't know, but there's two books out in the series. Do I need to be starting any more series? The answer is absolutely not, but I think it is relatively short. 
it's 408 pages is what the paperback says it is so okay um so i may choose to read this or i'm at least going to try it out for a chapter or so and i will come back and i'll let you know what i'm thinking about it what's going on with it what it's about all right guys it's thursday night i'm about 45 percent into the first girl child by amy Harmon, and this of course as i'm getting into it i'm really using that it is a fantasy romance but i will tell you that the romance part really has not occurred yet this is a story that like takes place over decades so it's a very kind of a slow build we're getting some kind of world building so basically this is a world where there are is blood magic rune magic and they very much believe in the gods and follow at first we get to know this sibling pair the brother kind of grows up to be a in their world like a seer and the sister is like this big warrior uh powerful warrior and so one day the brother happens upon her and she actually is giving birth to a child that um and she unfortunately dies giving birth but before she dies she actually curses the land that they will never have another girl child and that's because the father of her child has basically cast her out and said he wants nothing to do with her and so because she as a woman was treated like this she says listen here you're not going to be able to produce any other girl children and the baby boy that she gives birth to is then raised by her brother and he actually grows up to be this really powerful um boy like he's not very sm smart he stutters he doesn't talk very much but he understands what you're saying but he doesn't really speak back and so but the seers are saying that he's probably going to be the next king because she also said when she was dying that he was going to save you know the country and so we're kind of getting to know him as he's growing up and then of course we're getting to know the first girl child which came about because one of the men the the boy's father that cast the girl out actually wants to be king and so he actually marries this girl who trigger warning for stillbirth because she has a lot of stillbirth baby boys and she just cannot produce a child for him and so one day a girl that it's not of their land they have basically bought because you know they're they can't you know they can't produce any girl children has produced a girl child and he basically kills everybody who knows that this girl child is not his and he passes this child as his own in order to become king and so it's kind of his rise to power um i'm assuming there's going to be a revenge plot uh, to get revenge on him from the boy and the girl child at some point in time. We're kind of getting that. And I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of romance between the boy child and the first girl child, if that makes any sense. It's kind of confusing. I do think the world building is a little bit lacking. I will tell you that I like the characters. I'm just not feeling that connected to any of them. And I don't know if it has anything to do with my state of mind. Like, reading fantasy romance I really don't know but I'm gonna keep reading um seeing as I'm already like 45 percent in if if I do lose interest I may dnf I don't know I feel bad for dnfing like all these books but not that I've dnf'd any this month but I've thought about it so there's that okay it's Thursday it's very late I'm gonna go to bed now and I will kind of update you tomorrow I'm hoping to finish this book tomorrow I actually have to go to a conference this weekend so I'm not going to get much time to read I um, have a conference tomorrow and I'm going out doing some things tomorrow but maybe I'll come home and finish this tomorrow night but I also have a conference all day Saturday so so that's real fun yay for me all right I will check in with you guys later okay I am going to close out this vlog with my final thoughts on The Last Girl Child by Amy Harmon. This is my first Amy Harmon book. She writes in all kinds of genres, fantasy, um, lit fic, uh, historical fiction, and I, this will not be the last book I've, I read from her. I really enjoyed it. Firstly, her writing was fantastic. I feel like she really brought me into the story. I was kind of conflicted in the beginning because I went in blind, and the last checkup I um, gave you guys, I thought that this was going to be like a, oh, this is going to turn into a fantasy romance, and that's going to be the major plot of this, and I had just come off of a fantasy romance, and so I was kind of iffy about it, but this does have 
a very, very slow burn romance in it. So if that sounds like your thing, then by all means, go for it. It's very, very slow burn. Very slow burn. Slowest of slow burns. But her character work in this novel was freaking fantastic. I fell in love with all of these characters and um, it was historical fantasy with a little bit of romance built in but majority of the story was just about relationships and f family relationships and um, romantic relationships and just the bonds that we have with each other and I thought it was really beautiful and the message was really beautiful and at the end I teared up. So like the last half of the book was 100% a five star read for me. I had all of the five star feels. Unfortunately the first half didn't really drag me in so I'm gonna give this book four stars but high four stars. I mean that ending was uh, there is a companion novel, sequel novel to this. I don't think it's following the same characters. It's following different characters. But I liked her writing style so much and I like this world so much. It is a Norse mythology world. And so I highly recommend it. I really liked this more than I thought that I would. So there's that. Um, I'm going to close this out. So I've read some, uh, some books, I guess we can say. The backlist bag of picks has picked some definitely interesting reads for me. If I had to choose one, my favorite one from the month, it's going to be uh, The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon. That one was kind of like a very uh, hidden gem that I found. So I'm going to continue doing this. So uh, I'll catch you guys next week in the next vlog. I hope you guys are having a great week. Leave what you guys are reading or have read this week down in the comments below.